Here's Dr. Scott Schachter from the Ocular Service Academy with your industry spotlight. Welcome everybody uh, to our industry spotlight today for TFOS Dues 2 Ocular Service Academy uh, podcast. Today we're meeting with Regenerize, Dr. Harrell of Regenerize in Tampa Bay, Florida. Welcome, Dr. Harrell. I look forward to hearing more about your product. I've got some familiarity as a user, but I look forward to hearing more about it. So if you can share with us your your story, your background, your training, and, and how you came up with the idea for this innovative eye drop. So my background actually started at Emory. Uh, I was uh, doing research with uh, immunology at the time. And then after medical school, I was recruited by Dr. Michael E. DeBakey from the uh, the Texas Medical Center. And he wanted me to start a regenerative medicine program there, which I did. And I uh, started working on a lot of different applications uh, in regenerative medicine. And I noticed there really wasn't a lot in ophthalmology. So I really wanted to have something that would really address, especially the cutting edge biologics in ophthalmology. Amniotic membrane has been used for decades and everybody's familiar with that. But people wanted to have something better that uh, wouldn't interfere with the vision, something that would actually be more convenient that the patient could actually apply at home. And so I thought there was a big need for a biologic eye drop. So we actually developed the first biologic eye drop to help with the corneal surface. And, and it really helps uh, on dry eyes in particular. And we've gotten you know thousands of eye care professionals that's used it with very good success. Can, can you explain exactly what is regenerative medicine and how, in your opinion, it impacts the future of medicine going forward? I think it's going to be a major change in medicine in the future. I think all the pharmaceutical companies, if they don't already have a biologic in their pipeline, they will in the next five years or they probably will be not on the cutting edge anymore. Biologics, uh, as you probably know, are all from some living tissue. So if you compare a biologic and a small molecule pharmaceutical, a small mo- molecule pharmaceutical is more of a chemical and you know, you know exactly what it is. It's fairly easy to produce in mass quantities. That's very different from a biologic. A biologic is a lot more complex. It's usually a lot more natural for the body. One of the first biologics was actually human insulin. So before human insulin came out, there was a lot of porcine insulin and other species, but they always had different problems with those. So going to a human insulin that was a lot more similar was a big advance and now it's the standard today and almost everybody uses human insulin. But that's an example of a biologic. If you look at the eye and some of the uh, proteins that are in the eye and the tear film, there's a, you know hundreds of different proteins there. And if you start getting problems like chronic inflammation in the dry eye, sometimes you get these chronic inflammatory mediators and they this cause more and more problems that, you know, if you can replace some of those chronic inflammatory proteins with anti-inflammatory protein, it helps decrease some of that chronic inflammation. And then later, the uh, regenerative uh, effects are really more by the growth factors and helps to regenerate the corneal surface. Very good. And what is the source of your eye drop? It's from human uh, amniotic fluid. We get this from fully informed donors through a 501c3. There's no ethical issues. It's a full-term placenta. The mother's fine, the baby's fine. And we just want to get the the source that you can't really make in a laboratory. These are very unique proteins. And that's why that living source of the proteins is very important because we can make things with that that is far superior to any kind of drug that you can try to affect one pathway in the eye, for example, with some of uh, the different drugs out on the market. But the problem with that is those, those are not natural proteins that they're using. These are small molecules. And what happens is they have a lot of side effects associated with it because they're not natural to the body. So having a, a biologic makes it a lot more natural to the body and allows it to get much better results. Very good. And your now Regenerize comes in two strengths, the light and the professional strength. Can you tell us a little bit about those two? So uh, I wanted to have two products because there's different, uh, some people that only have mild to moderate dry eyes, as you know, and, and I wanted to have a product that would address that market. 
our first product was really on the professional to treat the worst of the worst on the chronic dry eyes. And we've done very well on the professional grade and we've gotten some excellent results when nothing else worked. But you know, s since that time, a lot of people did request something for more of the mild to moderate. And that's really what we wanted to have something that we can use that didn't require in refrigeration, which is important for the people that wanted the convenience of having something they can just carry around with them during the day and use. So it was really developed mainly for the, the more severe versus the more mild or moderate was really the reason why the two products were developed. And I imagine the light has been widely embraced. Uh, I know that within my own vision source group, uh, and I'm a vision source administrator, I know there are a lot of vision source users who've really latched on and, and been wowed by some of the results. Can you give us an example of two patients, one who might be put on the light, one might, who might be put on the professional strength, and then what sort of dosing and follow-ups and duration of treatment would you anticipate on average? So we usually leave the final recommendations up to the eye care professional, but uh, in general, if somebody comes in with severe problems with sojourns or Steven Johnson syndrome, we usually recommend going straight to the professional and it can be used, you know, four times a day or even more if it is needed. Some people, after they get some control of their, especially of their chronic inflammation, maybe you can go back from you know, four drops a day to three drops a day or two drops a day, but you still need to have something to help regenerate that uh, corneal surface. If somebody came in with more mild, moderate uh, dry eyes, that's where the light would be probably a good way to, to use. I've talked to some eye care professionals and they, they've they done their own protocols where they, if there's a very severe problem, they would start off with a professional, get the, the ocular surface under control and then go to the light during the day to make it convenient for the patient if they wanted to use uh, the drops and not need refrigeration. And then at night, go back to the uh, professional again. And, and some people have gotten very good results by doing that. Some people have actually changed their whole dry eye protocol and eliminated a lot of the other things they've used in the past. And they will go as the first line of treatment to uh, uh, regenerate light or regenerate professional. And they've gotten you know, very excellent results with that. And would you anticipate, are, are these patients cured of needing to use the product forever? Or are a lot of these patients continuing on with the light version? Uh, well, we, we, we don't lightly use the word cure. Uh, we have actually seen when it's more of the mild dry eyes, we have seen some people that you know no longer need the drops, but in the majority of the cases, you still got some source of chronic inflammation that's ongoing and you have to keep addressing that or otherwise you kind of go back to baseline again and you lose some of the uh, healing effects that you've uh, obtained. So it's it's hard to get completely off of it if you have severe dry eyes, especially the the sojourns and the you know, Stephen Johnson's and the, uh, the more severe options like that. So we don't like to use cure, but we definitely get you know nice improvement uh, in the patients and the doctors are usually very happy with the results. I'd agree. We often talk about managing dry eye versus curing dry eye and uh, sure. it's finding a, a way to live with it. So great point. In general, uh, so let's focus on the mild to moderate patients for a moment. Got a patient with some persistent corneal staining, their OSDI or speed score is a little bit high, you can't get relief through artificial tears, for example. When, when would you expect to see symptomatic improvement from these patients in addition to the clinical sign improvement? So everybody's different, as you know, and a lot of it depends on the severity. Some people we've heard after even a few days, they get some symptomatic relief, and that's usually from that, uh, those anti-inflammatory components. To get the real healing is going to take you know several weeks or months to to really get the final results as far as the healing and the growth factors. But you know we've seen some people within days or a week or so actually talk about some symptomatic improvement from the dry eyes and the symptoms of it. So it might be reasonable to follow back with these mild to moderate patients in about three weeks or so? That would be a perfect time to follow up and get their feedback about how they're doing. Excellent. Tell me about the shelf life of the product. So both the light and the professional both have three-year shelf life. So it's a very stable product. Very good. And, and what about the safety profile? Um, the sterility, the overall composition of the product. You mentioned a little bit about the fully informed uh, process of obtaining, but how was the sterility? So that was actually a very important point when I first uh, developed this product because I wanted to have a sterile product. That was actually the uh, criteria that uh, we made for the product. And, and as you know, in 
the FDA standard in medical devices, they will have a, a sterility assurance level of 10 to the minus six. And what that means is, you know, you have one in a million chance of getting an infection from a medical device if it's got a 10 to the minus six sterility assurance level. So that works well with a medical device, but if you try to do that, and they usually use some irradiation, either gamma rays or E-beams. The problem is that, you know, if you use those irradiations, with a biologic, it would affect the proteins in there and actually cause some breakdown in that and cause pretty radical. So we never thought that was a really good option. Some people have done that, but it's really not recommended uh, to do that. And in our opinion, we actually have a different sterilization procedure that we actually kept as a trade secret and got 30 patents around uh, this. And that gives us the 10 to the minus six sterility assurance level, but without using any irradiation. So you have the full potency of all the proteins without any kind of breakdown or free radicals. Right, and and there are two business models for the medication or the treatment. Can you explain those? You know, some people, if, uh, if they're not used to doing very much retail in their office, they can do a scripting model where they can recommend it. And we're, we as the manufacturer can help fill the, uh, prescription for them. So some people like that to get started. And some people would prefer to just have it right there on hand in their office. That's more of a stocking model. And there's uh, some financial benefits to do that. And, you know, we can kind of go through that if there was the interest of somebody to know one versus the other. But, you know, both options are available. And some people start off with, with a scripting model and go to stocking. Uh, that's not uncommon. Dr. Hurrell, I know Regenerize has been gaining a lot of popularity. Like I mentioned within my vision source group nationally, there's been a lot of buzz about it. Can you tell me about what you've seen from your side of thing? How's your company doing? Well, the company's doing very well. I mean, we started off with the professional and that was very well received and people always used it as the, when they had the worst of the worst and nothing else worked, it was the you know, last you know thing they pulled out to try. And we got our reputation built on that. But when people wanted to have something more of the light, that's when we developed to that. And, and the, we've actually picked the worst time in history to come out and launch the light product. It was actually, we call it the pandemic launch uh, because it was the worst time to come out with that. But even with that said, we were actually able to grow very rapidly with the light product, but mainly because it fills a big unmet need out there because a lot of people are looking for something to, to meet that much bigger market with the mild to moderate. And uh, this was like perfect for that. And that's, I think, why we're getting the rapid growth in that market segment. Great. And uh, can you tell me about the mechanism of action? What exactly is happening when the patient puts that drop in their eye? So the, that's the very uh, interesting part. We actually did an um, animation video that uh, we're finalizing now to actually explain that because that's one of the common questions a lot of eye care professionals ask. So they usually think about you know a drug when you have one pathway and that you know, usually interferes with some pathway, but usually it has some effect on secondary pathways and that's usually where some of the side effects come in. The biologic regenerize is much different from that. So it's actually got multiple mechanisms of action because there's multiple proteins in the product and each protein is natural proteins. There's nothing artificial. We don't put any preservative in the product by design because we don't have to because it is a sterile product. And some of the proteins actually have antimicrobial properties to help also. So the mechanism of action is, you know, a combination of some anti-inflammatory cytokines to actually decrease that chronic inflammation and also the growth factors to help repair the corneal surface. So it's usually multiple mechanisms of action, but the safety factor is, is very impressive. We've actually had no reported adverse events because of, it's a very safe product and it's a sterile product. So we've been very happy with the results of that also. And how can doctors find out more? Can you tell, tell me about your website? So our website is www.mydryeyes.org. And that kind of explains more about the product, more about what uh, different business models are available and a way we can get more information to anybody that's interested. We have, you know, 30 plus you know, peer reviewed papers that you know, are available that we can uh, share with anybody that's interested and kind of take a deeper dive in some of the science. Well, we're all about following the science and evidence-based medicine. And to that point, you know, TFOS 2 is two. One of the things that came up with was a stepwise approach to therapy. Typically in my practice, if I've got a dry patient who's not done anything, step one would be 
lifestyle changes, nutraceuticals, artificial tears, et cetera. The key, the important part of that to me is that you need to follow them back. If you tell them just to come back, if they're not doing better, I think you lose a lot of them. So I always make sure they come back. Step two is when you write a prescription, a topical treatment, or you're performing in office meibomian gland expression. This is where now I, for me, Regenerize is a step two approach. That's where I think if you try just some fundamentals, the, the key being if they're, if they're a train wreck, you know, you may not want to, and they've already tried step one, uh, I think you're going to jump something further. But if it's your mild to moderate dry, I put them at level two. In your mind, before just before we sign off here, this is a translational medicine podcast, and we really pride ourselves on, on giving doctors clinical pearls or takeaways all the science you've learned, everything you know about your product, how it works. You know, we don't actually treat patients as we're the manufacturer. So we get a lot of feedback from a lot of eye care professionals. And some of them are actually, you know, truly miraculous stories that we've gotten. And we put a lot of those on our website because they really are unbelievable. But these are unscripted testimonials from doctors and patients that use the product. Excellent. Well, I want to thank you so much for your time today, Dr. Rell. And I've had great experience in my own practice with your products. So I wish you continued success. And uh, thank you for sponsoring our podcast. No, well, thank, yeah, thanks for um, being willing to let us be a part of this. Yep. Have a very good day. This has been your Industry Spotlight with Dr. Scott Schechter. Thanks for listening. You can find us online at www.ocularserviceacademy.com, all major podcast platforms, and YouTube.